<clears throat> right, this is from <clears throat> the Kuti Sichot of the Rebbe. Chelek Aleph. Yeah, it's backwards. Okay. Is it backwards by you? Anyway, take my word for it. Lukuti Sichot of the Rebbe. <coughs> Written in Yiddish. The, the language that the Rebbe spoke. The Rebbe went over this. I would like to learn the Devar Malchut, but the problem is that the Devar Malchut goes, it links everything together, the time and what's being read. So the Devar Malchut that's in, in the collection is when Tazri and Matsura were joined together, which means that everything it came after Passover. Tazri and Matsura came after Passover because it was a it was a uh, a regular year. So part we're joined together this year. There's an extra month, so everything is like pushed back a little bit, back a little bit. So now it comes before Passover. So there, as a result, everything that's written in the Devar Malchut, I mean, it's it's eternal. It's relevant to all times, but it's not. Uh, it's sort of out of sync now, and you have to keep explaining what it means. You know, and when Mitzorah comes before the, the, the comes after Passover, and it's not after Passover. It's before. Okay, so let's do this. This Shabbos, by the way, here we go. Hein Teke Shabbos. This Shabbat, the Rebbe Kurs spoke this on Shabbat. This was like in 1957, the Rebbe spoke. This is a speech. Hein Teke Shabbos, this Shabbat, the Allah Shabbos is Lashana, like all the Shabbos of the year, is for Bundin is connected, Mita Gveser Parsha is connected with a certain Torah portion. Kabbal Kadush Mori Chami Adma, the previous Lubavitcher Rebbe picture. Previous Lubavitcher Rebbe. Rebbe Yosef Yitzchak. Blessed memory. <clears throat> the previous Lubavitcher Rebbe, Flechzich Mishtamit Zayin, and so Darmanin, the Naman, from Haintuk Parsha. He used to try not to mention the name of this week's Torah portion. Why? Because it's not a nice thing. Metzora. Metzora is this disease we talked about. <clears throat> affliction. Impurity. He would call it Parshas Tahora. He would call this week, he would call instead of Metzora, which is the disease, he would call, he would call it Parshas Tahora. That's really one of the first words. Zostia Torata Metzora. He would call it the, par, the, por, the Torah portion the Torah reading, he would call it not Mitzora, but he would call it Tahara. Tahara means purification. Because the previous Rebbe did not want to call it something which is the name, which is the name on more stenus shriben other Zagan nor them tag from Chodesh. And he would write, he wouldn't, the, the Torah portion, he would write just the day of the month, similarly. Oichen Itzter Chodesh, also in our month, Nisan, them Zman from Yitzhiya Smitzra, the time of going out of Egypt. Un vi in Yanim, like everything, is Oich Das, was men laint in Haintekist Parsha, that which we read in this week's Torah portion. So it comes out at linking this together. So in other words, the, the Rebbe would, would say this Shabbos, let me just, I just want to have a look over here. Excuse me one moment. One moment. I, here we go. Here we go. That's right. The, 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 the previous Rebbe, he wouldn't call it any name at all. Either we would call it the Parsha of Tahora, or he wouldn't say anything. He would say the Parsha of the Parsha of, uh, 
of the first day of Nisan or Parshas Shabbos HaGadol, etc. So we try not to mention, even in writing, the word Metzora. Say bad things. <clears throat> or if you see Mizraim Begin going out of Egypt, the rabbis say because of faith and the merit of the faith. The Jews got out of Egypt. Is there diok in them, emuna davka, faith. Nira saga, not understanding, <clears throat> only faith. Now, was the Jewish people, they had suffered long enough. There's a, a promise to them that they were God's people. They were going to go out of Egypt. <clears throat> God was going to help them. God was going to protect them. All the logic that they had, all the reasoning that they had, that they've been too long already in Egypt and that they've suffered for absolutely no reason. They didn't do anything wrong. What did they do wrong? They, they, were, they were born in Egypt, slaves. They didn't do anything wrong. Why were they punished? Them? So they had all these logical reasons why they could say why it was coming to them. They should get out of Egypt. That None of those, in the merit of none of the logic, did they leave Egypt, because, but only because they had faith. Now, as we learned before in the previous mimer, what is faith? Faith means, <clears throat> by definition, something which is not understandable. Some aspect is not understandable. Or it's above understanding. <clears throat> Sometimes you can be like, you have a hunch, right? But you have a faith in a person. I have faith in you. We put faith in this person. Vos, here we have faith in God. Vos is ter oiftu from Amun. What, what exactly happens? What's the benefit of this faith? Vos is their sheikhs. So he says, what is the connection of going out of Egypt? As Davka in Ir, Zahud, Nigalo, Abotin, Mitzrayim, that in the merit of faith, they got out of Egypt. Why in the merit of faith was that getting out of Egypt? Say that they got out of Egypt because the Jewish people are, are smart, they're strong, because God made a promise. He promised to them he was going to take it. No, because they had faith. If they didn't have faith, if they would have given up, and not had faith, they wouldn't have gotten out of Egypt. Could that be? That's what it seems to say. Oy Hasidi almost Olam says, first of all, what's the big deal about faith? The Jewish people, also non-Jews, also believe in God. You know how many religions there are in the world? A lot of them. And they all believe in God in some form or other. At least they believe in something above them. By Zay is thus our nit kind of moon. This is not really true faith. Nor an Indian versus Mukrach Mitzar Sechel, but this logic leads you to this. Then men if a person that thinks in Mitzias Olam and how the world is here, is Mitzad Dem Klal Ain Davar Oseh That small, nothing can create itself. As Kump Mitzu a Hakara, you can come to an awareness. As this is done there, was hot in Erev Shabbat. Something created it. On fear it on, and it conducts the world. Right? Just think about it. They have these all these scientists. I mean, to me, I tell you the honest truth, I can't really understand these guys, but <clears throat> there was just this guy now. What was his name? Is Hawking or something? So he said he understands how the world was created. Why do you drink a cup? How can you understand what the world was created? What what created the world? Black holes? What's the sun? The black hole. Where did the black holes come from? Energy was a simply thin energy. It does such an idiot didn't understand what is energy. No, where did the energy come from? Ah, where does energy come from? Energy comes from from uh, the, from quarks, from this, from that, right? So there's a hundred things he says where they come from. Okay, the first thing, whatever you want to come from, spirit, right? Where did spirit come from? Where did spirit come from? So he says, listen, uh, the, the, the joke, there used to be a joke that they used to tell. There was a, a very good, uh, he still is, he still gives the lectures, Esco uh, Sofer. So it's like there comes a train, first train ever comes into the city of Helm. And they look at the train and they say, what's making the train move? What's making this? So they look, they can't find a horse or something like that. So they say, listen, it must be the second car pushes the first car. So what's pushing the second car? The third car. Third car pushes the first, <clears throat> the, the, the first and the second. <clears throat> and it also pulls all the cars after it. No, the third, what, what is moving the third car? Fourth car. Fourth car, it pushes it. 
and it pulls. What's moving the fifth car? The sixth, finally, there's a hundred cars. Finally, comes the last car. Good. What is moving the 99th car? So it's the hundredth car is pushing all the rest of them. What's pushing the hundredth car? It says, listen, I already answered 99% of your questions. You see that I have all the answers. What do you insist on asking questions? It's the same thing that this, that the, that the big bang was caused by the, the quarks, the quarks was caused by the, this it was caused by the black hole, it was caused by the negative power. But this, uh, where did the first existence come from? Where did it come from? Okay, so you can say either it came from, it just always was. That's what the Greeks said, it always was. <clears throat> or you can say that um, eh, it created itself. No, no, that, that's every, insane. How can a thing create itself? It has to be there in order to create itself. So you can say, okay, so there was a, a prime mover, some sort of a prime source, or maybe there wasn't any prime source. Okay, but, but this is all logical. This is all logical. A person can come to the conclusion, okay, I admit there was God, he created the world. Okay, now leave me alone. It has absolutely no implication whatsoever that God created the world. So he created the world. So what? He created me. He created, I'm a thief. I'm a liar. I'm a chief. God is creating me to be a thief and a liar. And so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do, right? I, a cat acts like a cat. I'm going to act like a thief. What's the, the, the right? What, what is possibly motivating me to change myself according to the creator of the universe? What, what, what do I care, right? Let him do his business. He's creating me, and I'll do my business, whatever I want. He's doing what he wants. I'll do what I want. <clears throat> so it says, that's not faith. Therefore, it's not faith. That's some sort of logic. Some sort of logic. Right? They say, what the, who, who are the people that really have faith? Poets. Poets have faith. They have faith that somebody's going to read their poetry. The bald as the etzem zich by z because by all these people, they're not thinking about godliness, nor the metzius from Velt. The thing is that there's such a thing as the world. So it brings the person, the Hoda and Elokus, right? All the religions of the world, all of them, without any exception, are only their people believe in it because they want benefit. They want benefit. They want some sort of security. They want some sort of a promise in the afterlife. In this life makes you better. You're going to go to heaven. You're going to get blessed. You're going to this. It's all selfishness, selfishness. And their belief in God comes because it's better to believe than not to believe. According to them, is there a hoda? Therefore, the fact that they believe in God, oich nor oich vifil velt is the machria. Thus haste. The, the, the belief in God is only as much as the world demands. How much godliness is relevant to the world and in the nature of Hecher from Welt, higher in the world and nature, isn't it more? He doesn't say there's anything above nature necessarily. Part of nature. It's right? part of nature to be, right? That's a, a, a level of consciousness. Other, the Amuna from Eden, but the faith of the Jewish people and the faith that the Jewish people are trying to bring to the world that A Abraham started and that Adam was supposed to have clung to kum nit from velt that doesn't come from the world. <clears throat> Eden, Zion, and Be'etzem, Jews are in essence connected to God. The Mela, therefore, lake zich by zi up is by them godliness. There are Jews that are totally unreligious, anti-religious, totally mundane, sunk in every pleasure in the world. And when it comes to say, they say, okay, bow down to this idol or we're going to kill you. Deny your Judaism, we're going we're gonna to kill you. All of a sudden, the person says, Shema Yisrael. That's what the story of Purim was, basically. Shema, what, what's he doing? The guy's not religious, doesn't believe in anything. He hates the rabbis, hates everybody, but he's a Jew. And all of a sudden, it wakes up inside of himself that he's giving his life for God. He doesn't believe in God. He says, yeah, that, that aspect of God that can be understood, I don't believe in. But the essence of God, the fact that God, that's above understanding, <laughs> that's the essence of a, of a Jew. Punct exactly. One minute. One minute. <clears throat> Uh, 
punct by the umus ha'olam, just like by the, by the non-Jews. <clears throat> is there inyan olam? Their whole thing is world. They're part of the creation. Azoi oich bayidin zainan elokus. The Jews are part of the creator. They got it deep down inside of themselves. The mela, so therefore, is in them nitakain hagbalos atava. Jews are not limited by nature. Unas like to buy it up, and it is and like say it's it's obvious to them. The pshitos simply axiomatic they call it. Oich elokus they feel godliness which is above nature. So you can have a thing like they have. Reform Jews, conservative Jews, reconstruction of Jews. What does it mean? He doesn't believe in God. He doesn't believe in the Torah. He doesn't believe in the commandments. He doesn't believe the Jewish people are chosen. He doesn't believe in this most disgusting idea of them in the world. He believes the Palestinians are right, that everybody is right except for the Jews. Everyone is right except for the Jews. If there's ever any argument, the Jews are always wrong. But nevertheless, they call themselves Jews. He's a reconstructionist Jew. He's a conservative Jew. He's a reformed Jew. By then, Jew is very, very important. Why? They hate the Jews. They can't stand the Jews. It's the most repulsive thing in the world. They look at themselves and they think, well, I hope I don't look like a Jew. I hope I don't talk like a Jew. I don't look like a Jew, right? There used to be this comedian, what's his name? Jackie Mason has a whole thing about it. He was one of them. <laughs> he was a person just like that, right? He was a person just like that. He had no connection with, as far as I know. He had been a rabbi, left everything, but a Jew, 100%. No doubt about it. He was proud. He was this. Azoivius were declared, that's what a Jew, and that's the essence of a Jew is connected to what? To God. Because, I mean, you have to explain what it, what it is connected to, if not that, right? If not God. That they care about their the Jewish race, the Jewish religion, right? The Jewish nature, that they, they could care about it less. Something about it all of a sudden. Azoivius is there declared, like it's explained in Hasidut. The chilek, the difference between a muna, omata olam, the difference between the faith of the non-Jews, but the faith of the Jews. As a By the way, the Jewish people got this faith when they ate matzah. <clears throat> when they ate matzah. Okay, we'll talk about that. As a munit Yisrael, the faith of a Jew in God <clears throat> is in Shem Abayah, in the name of God, Yud Kei Bav Kei. This is the aspect of God, which is past, present, and future at once. <clears throat> right By God, what's going to happen already happened. What already happened before is happening now. Does that make any sense? There's no time. There's no. How can there be no time? Of course, there's time. What do you mean? There's no time. There's, there's no. By God, there is time. There is. That's how the prophets could tell what was going to be in the future. Because by them, it already was in the future. Doesn't make any sense. What people don't have free will, they can do whatever they want. Yes, we don't understand it, but that's the fact. It's above understanding. Past, present, and future at once. Lamai lami atava, totally above nature. When the Amuna from Amumasa Ulam, but faith that non Jews have is in shame, Elohim. It's in the, na it's the name of God, which is called nature. Gamatria Teva. Elohim is the Gamatria Ha Teva. V, Pharaoh, like Pharaoh, Zain. And all of his sorcerers and his priests or whatever, Haben Gazakta said, Lo yadati at Hashem. I don't know this name, Yud Kevav. And I know all the gods in the world. His is the, the the Egyptians were very spiritual people. They were very spiritual. I mean, they were very licentious, what do you call it, decadent people, but they were very spiritual. They could take sticks and says, even children from school, they could take sticks and turn them into living snakes. They could take water and turn it into blood. Right? They had the ability to do this. And then it can just this power ruled over the whole world. They were connected to God, which is nature. And the Jewish people, when they left Egypt, they went out of nature. That's this Torah portion, which is Shabbat HaGadol. Shabbat HaGadol is the Shabbat right before Passover. That's this coming Shabbat. <clears throat> What's it got to do with Mitzorah? We'll see. Claire, Geret. Let's, let's explain this a little bit better. In Yeder Inyan, from everything in the world, Zuchtem Nit Id, a Jew looks for nature. And then, 
Sidon, then er Zetanes, even when he sees a clear miracle, was hot nit kind or in Teba, which is no natural way to explain it. Muzer Modazain, he has to admit, <coughs> does this a get like Zak, he has to admit this is a godly thing. When Oichdan, and even then, Oivifiel or can as much as he can, Vileres Antan, he wants to put it into garments of nature. A non Jew sees a miracle and he wants to explain it according to nature. And that's also the non Jew which is inside of every Jew. Oh, but a year, but a Jew, Lahabdil, is in Yedr Zach and everything, Basarzet, what she sees, Zuchter Balt immediately looks for godliness in it. When Punkte, and Ain Yehudi, Zuchta Filu in a Nais Goloi, even there's a real true miracle, but call Mini Ishtadlis as much as he can to Mazbizan to explain it according to nature is far cared by Yidin is exactly the opposite of a Jew. A feeling, you know, even a thing which is in plug, uh, <clears throat> uh, uh, at first glance, in Er Antan in Tevo, which is totally in nature, Stelter Zich Mitten Tokev, he's Kasha Orif, he's, he's stubborn and he says, does is Nit Mitzah Tevo, this is not nature, this is above nature. Now you have to understand, the Rebbe here is talking about what the true nature of a Jew is. He's not talking about what Jews actually do <clears throat> in the world, because Jews, have, especially especially we see what happened in Israel, right? Maybe you can see, we're going to see in a moment, maybe the most marked uh, exception to this is, uh, we said the Six-Day War, right? The Six-Day War, the whole world said it was miracles, and the Israelis said it wasn't a miracle. Oh, everything turned around. The Jews wanted to be more Gentile than the Gentiles. But that, that was the whole goal of making this state of Israel, what's called the, the secular state of Israel, that will be like the Gentile, will be another nation, and then nobody's going to hate us anymore. Just give everybody another reason to hate us. But the fact is, and in the essence, the Jewish people are here to show that everything is a miracle. Everything is a miracle. Every detail of nature is a miracle. Nothing is to be taken for granted. Every moment, every breath, every second of the world. Why nothing is to be taken for granted. Everything is a miracle. And by Ananju, it's not so. Here we see, let's see. <clears throat> what, what is supposed to be? Listen to this. It says in the Gomorrah and the Yerushalmi, it says the Jewish farmers, Mami and Bechai Olamin, they believe <coughs> in the creator of the world, the Zorea and plant. Chach Allah Vesen, even though that everybody knows, as Al Pitabad according to nature, Oibmem for Zait, if you plant seeds, a kernel, you plant a seed in the ground, Vax that grows up. That of Rayid, but by a Jew, a Jew, Zich Oivdem. Nit farlozen, it doesn't rely on nature. Erzet nit naman, a kernel, he doesn't want to take a, a seed. Un im a reinlegen and putting it in the ground, paturen azach biadayim, and is taking a, a seed and throwing it away, to leave them vos chukiatava because the nature makes it grow up. Chukiatava, the nature is hainan bayim, nit kenug, it's not enough. Far, far less lech <clears throat> as to leave say this is not that I say reliable enough that that he can patron zich be a dime that he can take seeds and throw them away. <clears throat> Their time for was erzite the reason that he plants is fal er is mami because he believes in God umboteach and he has trust that zain zuria. That it will be successful and given fruits. Ah, you can say, what a fool! What a fool! I mean, why? What, is he, what does he have to waste his time and energy believing in God for? Look at there's millions of farmers in the world. They don't believe in anything, and they plant and it grows up. He says, okay, they can do what they want to, but not me. I believe that everything comes from God. And that's the essence of a Jew. Punct via is just like a miracle. Vashat 
<coughs> nor nitkain or teva is their zikr from their abishter comes from God. Was hat gemacht them shino and made the change the nature, <coughs> and he made nature. Oy menvil zichz naren. If a person wants to fool himself, <coughs> is a filu by a nace even by the greatest miracle of all. As ken men zich oy ein naren. You can make um, uh, you can also fool yourself and saying it's no no miracle. For instance, even the miracle of the splitting of the yamsu which this is one of the greatest miracles that ever was in the history of the world. The, to the rabbi say, the Daruf, as Kasha, that it was this miracle was hard to do by God. It was hard for him to do it. Is given a Nesinus Mokom, nevertheless a person can make a mistake and think that it wasn't a miracle. How? Eshtetem Echilta says in one of the Midrashim, as Vashas Kriyas Yamsuf, the time of Yamsuf, when it split, it says all of the water in the world split. It says that all the water, it doesn't say the river split. It says that the water split, except for the, the river Pras. It says the Nile River didn't, didn't, uh, this. Vashtet, which it says, In any case, when does is it says in a mimer from the Rebbe Marash, when does is was stay people in Mavasach Pachat. It says that there fell on them <coughs> and the non-Jews. Fear. As Bashas to Umas Haben Gizen, when the Jews, when the non-Jews saw a splitting of the Amsuf, it says that every one was afraid. They asked from Sivas and Darfur, they said, what's that going on? And the answer was, as they have in Zich, their boost does as to leave Yidden, that this comes because of Jews. When people all of a Safaka, then it came fear on them. But from their Tzfetas, but on the other side, what and the non Jews saw that all the water in the world was splitting. So they were afraid. Why are they splitting? The Jews are going across the sea, and therefore the God of Jews, he controls all nature, and he is making the world. Oh, so that says that the non-Jews were afraid. <clears throat> but on the other hand, we can take it the other way. That the fact that all the water in the world split, <clears throat> or it gave a place for making, for fooling yourself. Then as Vault Zich Spalten nor the Yamsuf. If only the Yamsuf, the Red Sea, would have split, as Volten Allah clear Gavuist, everyone would know clearly, as thus is a nace from their Abister that it's for from God for Jews. The Jews had to go across this one particular river, and God split that one particular river. The Baltaver, but we see that all the water in the world split, right? <clears throat> this whatever this non-Jew is taking a bath early in the morning, and he's drinking a cup of coffee in the bath, and suddenly the bath splits, and the cup of coffee he's holding in his hand splits. What type of a thing is this? Hot as could give, and this, so therefore they could say, ah, I see. This was some sort of a natural magnetic thing, probably the place of the moon or something, as thus is mitzad ha sateva. This is nature. For some reason at this time, all the water in the world split. This is not a miracle for the Jews. What's the what's the proof? Because it wasn't done for only the Jews, it was done for everybody. So what do we see? A Jew plants, does the most normal thing in the world that millions of farmers are doing, but a Jew says, by me, when I plant, it's a miracle. On the other hand, the non-Jew, he can see the biggest miracle in the world, the splitting of the sea, and he can say, <clears throat> it's no miracle. Or if it is a miracle, it's a miracle, but not for the Jews. Right? The, all the water split, some sort of a natural process, something happened. We don't know, cosmic rays or something. The world's, right? That's why water split. If a Jew wants to take the attitude of the non-Jews, then he'll also the same thing. He'll see the biggest miracles. And it's not a miracle. That's why it's going to be so hard for God to bring all the Jews back to the land of Israel. First, he's going to have to change the government of Israel. He's going to have to bring all the Israelis back to Israel. Whoa, that's going to be a big deal.
in order that there should be free will, is their oifen on Hagat Melamila. Then therefore, what does God do? Even in a miracle that's greatest, a miracle possible, is da makom, God purposely makes a place where you can make a mistake. <clears throat> he gives you a free choice, right? Six-day war, it was our planes. Our planes, we had rockets, we had planes, we had bullets. That's what did the job. Our pilots. Like they say, a person that wants to make a mistake will make a mistake. I want to make a mistake. So God gives free will. Yes. So therefore, that that a Jew believes in the creator of the universe, this is from his free will. But it's awakening the essence of his soul. It's there in his soul. He can choose not to listen to it. He can choose even to de de deny it. But that's the essence of the Jew's soul. And that's what took the Jews out of Egypt. This type of faith that even in the most mundane things in the world, it's all being controlled by the creator of the universe. It's being created by the creator of the universe. That feeling of faith, that's what took the Jews out of Egypt. That's what we have to learn from the Shabbos. And that's what we will learn more about, God willing, tomorrow. Now let's just do the Yom Yom, Yom Yom for today. <clears throat> Shalom Dober, that's today. He passed away on Saturday night in Rostov. He's buried in Rostov. The first mimer given after the passing of his father was on the second day of Cholomoid, Sukkot. <clears throat> his father was the Rebbe Marash, Rebbe Shmuel. He passed away in 1882. And it started, Ketsayit The last mimer that he said was in Purim, right before he passed away. He passed away now. Right? Purim was just like two weeks ago. It began Reshit Goyam Amalek. It's in Tafresh Pei. Kate Sam the, the, the beginning of the nations is Amalek, and God will put an end to all the darkness. As we'll talk about more, God willing, tomorrow, there will be, there will be a class. Yes, definitely at three o'clock today. Be with us. Hope to see you with Mashiach now. <clears throat>